This is a War Master Revolution battle report between two newer players. One player playing the Dark Elves, the other playing Tomb Kings in a pitched battle scenario. The Dark Elf player chose to get the most experience out of this game by taking several different units in the army list, opting for flexibility over specialization. The Tomb King player decided to take several different skeleton units due to their weaker nature followed up with some stronger units like the Bone Giant, the Chariot, and the Carrion. We'll now take a look at the battlefield. A central river cuts the battlefield in half with two crossing points. On the right hand side of it, there are several woods giving defended positions to infantry, a building that blocks line of sight, and a hill located in the corner providing additional line of sight bonuses for units taking it or defended position if such enemies try to charge up it. On the left-hand side of the river are several broken ground fields, some defended positions for fences, a building to block line of sight, and another hill. The Tomb King player wins the scouting role and deploys his scouts first, followed by the full army of the Dark Elves. However, we will now start with the Tomb King deployment. The Tomb King player deploys his Bone Thrower unit on the hill next to a small brigade of chariots, followed by his Lich Priest, a Carrying unit, a Bone Giant, and his General. A large brigade of two each archers and spearmen flank the right side of the river. On the other side of the river is the second Lich Priest, followed by a small unit of spearmen to guard the flank. Now we will review the Dark Elf player's deployment. The Dark Elf player deploys his Witch Elf unit on the far flank, followed by a unit of Repeater Crossbowmen, a unit of Cold One Knights, a small brigade of Spearmen, and his General. Continuing, we have a single unit of Bolt Throwers, a War Hydra. On the hill is a unit of Harpies, followed by his Sorceress and a unit of Dark Riders. The right flank Lich Priest issues orders to the Chariots, the Carrion, and the Bone Throwers on the hill. All of them successfully move up. The General then issues an order to the Giant Brigade of Infantry, moving them up and issuing a second order to just half of it, breaking them off and moving them farther up the field. He then successfully issues two orders to the Bone Giant, getting him up beside the house and in striking distance. On the left flank, the Lich Priest issues a successful order to the small flank force unit of spearmen across the river. Then, after all units have been completed, the Lich Priest and the Tomb King all move up to position themselves for better orders on the following turn. The Dark Elf player begins his turn by issuing an order from his Sorceress to his Dark Riders, moving them 30 centimeters up and into the broken ground. He then follows up with an order to the Harpies, but fails. Using the War Master Revolution rules, they should have made a 10 centimeter move up for Flyers. However, we misinterpreted the rule and they had made a half pace move. The Dark Elf General then begins taking command of the army, issuing an order to the Hydra, moving it up the field and then to the small brigade of spearmen up into the wood to take advantage of defended position. The general then issues an order to the cold one knights, getting them up the field, and then a long ranged order to the witch elves, also successful, moves them forward. Although not shown, he then issues an order to the repeater crossbowmen, moving them up in line with the witch elves. For the last order of the turn, he successfully manages to order 
the repeater bolt throwers twice, getting them further up the field and in striking distance of my units. During the shooting phase, the repeater bolt thrower managed to score several hits on my flank spearman unit, causing them to fall back and also lose an entire stand. The repeater crossbowmen then fire a single shot long range volley at my bone giant. These hits fail to make armor saves and cause three wounds and drives back my bone giant. At the end of the shooting phase, these hits should be dropped. However, we did not realize how this works with monsters and the hits did carry over. The play then passes back to the Tomb King player. This photo is the aftermath of the situation, but I'll recount what happened. The Bone Giant gets a successful order and charges the repeater crossbowmen in the front. The carrying unit flies behind them to the rear. During the shooting phase, the Lich Priest in the woods attempts to cast a Raise Dead spell on the combat and is successful on a 5+. My opponent uses his Dispel Scroll to stop the action. During the combat, the Bone Giant wins, forcing the retreat of the repeater crossbowmen into the carrying unit, destroying them completely. After the battle, the Bone Giant retreats back to protect the Spearman and Archer unit from a certain attack by the Cold One Knights. Elsewhere on the battlefield, the chariots move up for a flanking maneuver around the forest on the left-hand side. The artillery also move up as nothing is in range for them to attack. The other smaller brigade of skeletons moves up along the building and the flank force that's been reduced to two stands also moves up. During the magic phase of this, the left hand side Lich Priest successfully casts a Doom and Despair on the Harpy unit. This will stop them from providing any engagement in the following turn. Play then passes back to the Dark Elf player. During the orders phase, he utilizes his initiative on the Cold One Knights to charge the Bone Giant. The Witch Elves, due to their rules, are forced to make a charge at the closest unit, this being the Skeleton Archer unit. During the charge, the Archers fire a volley of stand and shoot action, causing one single hit. The Spearman Brigade moves up and attempts to make a second move in order to get engaged with the archer unit. However, they fail the order and stop short. The sorceress then orders for the harpy unit. Although they cannot engage, they fly up behind the spearman end of the brigade, just in case they're able to push them back in a future turn. The sorceress then orders the dark rider unit up forward into a more advantageous position for shooting. The Sorceress then attempts to cast a spell, Dominion, on a 4+. The Frenzied Witch Elf unit easily slices through the Skeleton Archer unit and follows up into the Spearman. Although they are able to take out one stand, they take enough damage and are forced to retreat. Now reduced to one stand, there's not much left they can do. The Cold One Knights easily mop up what's left of the Bone Giant, although in return, he does make them sacrifice one complete stand. During the shooting phase, the Archer unit takes shots from the Repeater Bolt Thrower and the Dark Riders, losing one stand and forcing them back and into the building. The Tomb King player, realizing it would take too long for the chariots to move around the wood, orders them back. He then orders for the artillery unit to get in range to shoot the Witch Elves. The Spearman unit charge forward and attack the Cold One Knights, as well as the carrying unit that was still behind. During the magic phase, the Lich Priest uses his Ring of Magic to summon an undead skeleton horde from nowhere, thereby flanking them. During the combat phase of this, the Cold One Knights are wiped out and the spearmen use a sing lose a single stand. They then slide back to protect themselves from all the Dark Elf units on the opposite side. In a disastrous turn of events, the spearmen and the archers from the Tomb King player 
both go into battle, but even though they go on the offensive, the Dark Elf units are too much and cause more damage than they suffer, driving them back. Because they are wedged between two enemy units, they are all slaughtered to the man. Nothing is left. At this point, the break for the Tomb King player is down to a half a point. With the left flank Spearman unit being weak, the Dark Elf player eyes that for his next turn. Should he be able to take one standoff, he secures victory. The Dark Elf player then proceeds to execute his plan, moving several units around to try and take shots at the left flank unit. He also then surrounds my carrion unit, attempting as a backup plan to destroy them completely. Delivering a volley of fire from his Dark Elf Bolt Thrower and Dark Riders secures victory by eliminating the last stand of the left flank unit. Dark Elves win with two break to spare. I hope you have enjoyed this Warmaster Revolution battle report.